Great. It's great to see you all again. I hope you've been doing well. We've been praying for you. Thank you for your prayers for us as well. I wondered how you're doing. Uh, Rebecca hasn't told me if you've been doing your homework. Have you been doing your homework? <laughs> I hope you're, you're getting used to, if you are not already used to it, to just taking time on a regular basis to just sit with Jesus, just to get to know him, sense his heart, uh, even sit with scripture and let it wash over you and let it do its effect in your heart. Uh, these are things that often many people miss. And uh, I just want to encourage you in that. You are probably all doing it, but um, I just want to encourage those of you who may not be doing it as much. It is a, an amazing blessing if you do it and you really get to know Jesus in a different way. And it's a powerful thing. So I would like to start with a quick word of prayer. May we do that just to help us settle down a little bit and get our hearts even more open and focused. Let's do that for a moment. And dear Father, I just thank you so much that you are with us today. You're with us all together, even though we may not literally be together, yet you are with us. You're everywhere, and we thank you for that. And we just ask, Lord, as we gather together, as we've been singing, as we've been talking, as we've been praying, we want to let go in a new way to release our lives, our hearts, our hopes, our dreams to you and to receive from you today what you want to speak to our hearts. And we say in faith, we receive it. We want to hear literally from you because we know you love us and you have an amazing plan for each of our lives. And so we thank you for what you will do today. And everyone said in faith together, amen, amen. Well, let's start with this. Imagine you're out in the rough sea. Now, those of you in California, you never have rough seas, right? So you may not know what this means. That was a joke, but uh, I'm sure you have seen some rough waters. I hope you have never been in rough water but imagine there you are thrown overboard by the storm and there you are in rough water, ready to drown unless you are rescued. And suddenly a ship appears, they throw out a rope to save you from drowning. What do you do? I hope you know naturally what you would do. Would you reach out? Oh, I think maybe with one finger, I'll be all right. And, and try to grab a hold of that rope a little bit. Uh, that doesn't work, does it? Two fingers maybe, three? No, what would you do? What would I do? You would do everything you could do to get all five fingers, your palm, your whole hand, everything wrapped around that rope, and then two hands as well, if at all possible, so you can be pulled to safety. Now, let me ask you, what about the storms of life? We all have our personal questions, our struggles, our fears. We are in challenging times in our world today. What, is all this, what does all this say to us? Is, is there nothing? Is there no hope? Is there no rescue? And I hope you all would say, oh no, there is. Because we know a God who has not abandoned us and he cares for us, amen? So will the storms destroy us? Is there any hope? Of course, because our God has told us some things. He's thrown us a lifeline, amen? For he's told us, I know the plans I have for you. They're good, they're not evil, Jeremiah 29. He said, I'll never leave you. Deuteronomy tells us that, Joshua tells us that. Hebrew, re, Hebrews repeats those words. He's told us he is there and he cares about us. 
He has said to us, I work all things together for good for those who love me. Even in times like this, in times much more difficult than this, he said, remember Romans 8, 28. I can do all things. Amen? So is there a rope for us? Yes, there is. Absolutely. So then how do we get a firm grip on God's rope for us? A rope that reaches up to heaven even, to him for sure. I want you to turn with me for a moment to our survival manual. What is our manual? I hope you all know your manual quite well, or you're getting to know it more and more, better and better. The Bible, the word of God. And I want to point to five things this morning, our fingers representing those five things for getting a good grip that help us so that God can work even more in our lives the way he wants to. And so I'd like us to turn to Philippians chapter four, some verses there that many of you are pretty familiar with. And I hope to look quickly at a few and perhaps we'll see that in a little bit of a different light today and be a strong encouragement in the coming months for all of us. I wanna do a little bit, something a little bit different is I wanna read the scripture, but I wanna read it in short sections of a word or a phrase and then have you repeat it after me so that it has a little bit of a different emphasis and it sticks a little more in our minds and our hearts as we jump into this this morning, okay? So remember too, as we've been reminded and as the scriptures and even the songs we've sung this morning, this is written by whom? This was written years and years ago by the apostle Paul. Where was he when he wrote this? He was in prison. He was not on vacation on a beautiful island off somewhere in the Caribbean or whatever. He was, he was in serious trouble. He didn't have it easy. And here he is writing these words to people he was close to and to us today, for us today, in the manual, God's manual that we have. So let's listen because they are God's very words for us as well. So I'm going to read a phrase or a word and pause. You can say it, then I'll continue. So let's hear, hear it as God speaks it to us this morning. So let's begin with verse 4, and we'll go through verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, 
whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Aren't these wonderful words, powerful words? Just pray with me for a second, would you? And if you have your Bibles with you, lift them out up in front of the Lord together as an offering to him. Or if you're using your smartphone, you've got the Bible on there. Just reach, reach that out as well. And let's just offer this up, his word to us. Offer it to him right now. Lord, thank you for these precious words that you've given to us through our brother, Paul. Thank you for this amazing truth. And we ask you now that through this written truth, these words, you will anoint them by your spirit, that they will sink down into the soil of our hearts and they will bring fruit because we will encounter you, the living truth. Thank you that you're here, you're with us today, and you want to speak to our hearts. You care about us that much. And so we're trusting you now to speak to us through these, your words. And God's people said, amen. All right. So how do we hang on to him with all five fingers? Are you ready? Five things. And we're going to move through it pretty quickly. So hang on. Um, we're going to have a good ride through the storm and come out victorious. Amen. All right. Let's look at the first finger. Rejoice. Say that word with me. Rejoice. Say it a little louder, maybe like a word you love and it's very special to you <laughs> because it should become very special no matter what we're going through in our lives. Amen. A challenging one, though. So you may be saying, what do you mean rejoice in my circumstances and the things we're going through? Look at the word, look at the word itself and look at the meaning. Rebecca will tell you something about this because right in the middle of that word is a French root, a very important French word, joie, which refers to joy. And that word rejoice is talking about keep having joy. Keep joying, if you want to put it that way. It's a very powerful statement. It's not talking about what we know as happiness, what the world knows, but something far, far deeper called joy. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit in a moment. It's a, one, a part of the fruit of the spirit, as you know, in Galatians chapter five. Now look at this statement for a second. Look at first, you see the when of rejoice, it's a continuing command, as we just noted. So it says, keep on rejoicing. Is that easy? How many of you find that easy? Put your hand up. I don't see any hands up. Hmm. Okay, I feel better because I sure don't find it easy sometimes. That's for sure. But there it is, a continuing command for us. Not just when we feel like it, not just when it might make sense to us, always say that word always so also you see the how of rejoice do you step out just when you think maybe you should or when it feels good uh, that kind of a thing it just says do it it's like nike has told us nike got it from jesus actually just do it when we start and we step out in faith God begins to move in and do something we may never have thought before. 
That's the way he is. So how? We start by just doing it, no matter what our emotions may tell us. Notice third, the why of rejoice. Why do we rejoice? We know from scriptures, we sense it a little more, you'll see in this passage as well. Who is this God we say that we serve? What is he like? We know he's all powerful. He can do all things. He's sovereign. He's in control. And yet he loves us with an everlasting love, the scriptures say. So therefore we know we can trust him. Do you know that today? If you're struggling with that, rehearse this in your heart. Ask him to speak to you about this because you really can trust him. Say that to the person next to you, or if no one's there, say it to yourself. You can trust him. Now remember, here we are, you, we just noted, Paul was writing this. You look at his own circumstances. He's writing from prison. And soon again, and he got a word from God, a sense of that too, he was going to be in prison again in Rome, among all places. And yet, with all the things he's experienced, all the hard times, look at this. He is full of joy. Can you imagine? I want to encourage you, too, on your own during this week to take Psalm 42 and look at that for a few moments um, on your own and let let this speak to your heart about something. You notice in here, I just want to throw it out a little bit, a little bit of a, of a, um, a hint at what's going on. And you can take it from there because we don't have time today. But you notice in there, David is speaking to his own soul. The part of us that's our mind, will, and our emotion, our, uh, our, uh, our mind, will, and our emotions. And sp he's speaking to that and probably a lot to his emotions, because often our emotions will flare up. We will get fearful or worrisome, all these things. But David is saying, in effect, he's saying, soul, why are you, why are you all worried? Why are you so disquieted? And later he says, hope in God. Do you hear that? You know, it's, it's like almost maybe every day we ought to preach the gospel to ourselves. <laughs> We ought to speak the truth, call our soul to receive what the truth is. An important process that many of us never do, but it's a powerful thing. And I encourage you to uh, think about that and read just quickly through that psalm and see what, what David is doing and what's on his heart. Because it's related to this here, just what we're talking about. So, the rejoice is an important thing. Now, what's the next finger? Relax. Say that word with me. Relax. How many of you uh, don't relax much? Oh, there's not much confession. Oh, okay. Now I see the hands. Good, good. It's very hard for us, isn't it? Often in our culture and even with most of our personalities, but here's an important word to us. And isn't it interesting here that first Paul says, let your gentleness be evident. What's he talking about here? Gentleness. You go to 1 Corinthians 13, you see a little bit about what love is about, but this is going a little bit beyond that related to kindness, even confidence, likability in a sense of the ability to influence in a good way. It's not weakness or frailty at all. Uh, it's a calm strength, a calm strength. And Paul is saying, let that be known. How do we do this? You notice something here? Look at Paul's words again. Let your gentleness be evident. Do you see something there? It's already there. It just might not be too evident right now in some of our lives. So what, what's going on here? Let me say something to you. Here's the secret. Who is this Jesus we say that lives in us? What is he like? What does he have? 
He has everything, correct? Right? He is everything. So if you have Jesus living his life in you, what do you have? Hmm? You have everything he is. Everything he is, is in you. It's just a question of releasing it, isn't it? Receiving it, standing on it, walking in it in faith. So I want to encourage you, and Paul is saying this even in this, let him have freedom in your life. Relax in him. Let him be who he is in you and through you by the power of his spirit in you. And some powerful things will happen. More and more of Jesus will show through you. Now, all that he is. Does anybody want that? Hmm? Huh. Amen, amen, amen. Why is this so important, Paul says? Because the Lord is near. Now, this is a challenge and an encouragement. For some of us, it's a challenge. For some of us, it's an encouragement. Some of us um, may not have our priorities right. We may be struggling on some things in our lives. We may feel like we're a failure. Uh, but look at this. There is hope for us. We don't want to waste our lives. We want to be fruitful for God and not be caught off guard when he returns. We want to bring him joy and happiness because we have brought fruit for him because we have honored him. For some of us, it may be a challenge, but also an encouragement because we're going through some rough things in our lives and things are not easy nowadays, are they? They may get a lot more difficult, but who is Jesus? Amen. Who is he? And it's saying to us, hang in there. He's coming soon. You can do this. Just hang in there. Look what you have in you because of who he is. All right. Tell the person next to you, say to that person or say to yourself, relax. I didn't see any of you saying that to each other <laughs> because you're afraid someone's going to say that to you, right? <laughs> okay, next finger, third finger, verse six, request. What's the part of the secret, a part of the secret to dealing with our storms? We have a talk with Jesus. You see, we make our requests known to him well he knows already but it helps for us to speak it because then we engage directly with him amen you see the dynamic there notice something about talking with him about requesting first there's the how of requesting it says don't be you notice that it's talking about a statement of choose choose not to be Choose against fear, anxiety, worry. Even though you don't feel like it, choose against it. Then God begins to move in and do a work in us and through us. Look at the when of requesting. Does it say in some things? Don't be anxious. No, it says don't be anxious about anything. So we're talking about every situation any of us may face. Now I wanna encourage you for a second. Think about the toughest challenge that's in your life right now. Take a second and think about that. The toughest thing you're facing. Now I wanna ask you a question. Does that tough thing, does that fit in the category of anything here? Does it fit here? Is it in anything? You know, the answer should be obvious. Amen. And I want to encourage you in your life, even maybe in your heart and your mind right now, even take that situation, that challenge in your life and lift it up in your hands and offer it to God and choose to not be anxious about it 
and let him then begin to work even more deeply in it and through your life and encourage you in it and bring you what you need. Amen. So there's the what of requesting. It says, make known. In other words, literally, you present it to him. You come to his throne. Hebrews reminds us we can come how? With boldness, with great confidence. God wants us to come to him, any of us. You see that? So then he says what? Secondly, with prayer. Prayer is connecting with God, talking to him, listening to him, leaning toward him, being poised toward him more and more in our lives. With prayer and also what? Petition. That is more earnest, specific, heartfelt prayer. We connect with him, but we get earnest and specific with him. You see? That's the what. Now notice the where of requesting. Where do we request? Where do we bring these things? To what? To whom? It says directly where? To God. Not to one of the angels or anybody else you respect or love. Bring it primarily to him. God himself. Because we need this reminder. I need it. We have direct access to him isn't that amazing so remember who he is don't forget he's not just our great creator god he's our father our heavenly father he's our abba our dear father now last notice the manner of requesting how are we supposed to be bringing our requests to god what's that special word that you love Thanksgiving, right? How many of you love to give thanks in the middle of very hard times? Or maybe a difficult situation you find yourself in. How many of you just full of Thanksgiving and say, God, thank you for this? <laughs> well, I don't a lot of the time. And if we're honest, you know what we'll say. But look, here's the habit he wants us to get into. If Paul can do it, we can do it. You see, again, he's sovereign. We can trust him. So this is a step of faith because we know God will be faithful to us. Say that, say to the person next to you, talk to him. Or to yourself, talk to him. Now the fourth finger, and that is receive. Say that word with me, receive. So what is the result as we learn to practice all these things? Look what happens. The peace of God takes hold of us in a new way. Look at how powerful his peace is. What's the word here? His peace will guard us. The picture in that word is the picture of a fortress. How many of you would like a fortress around your life? <laughs> Amen. You see, friends, if you take a stand against being anxious in these practical ways, he will put a literal fortress around you and nothing on earth or in the heavenlies can break through. Do you believe that? Do you want to believe that? Many of us have a hard time believing it, but we, we want to believe it and step in with that even to start with. But look at this truth. This is amazing. And what gets guarded? Look at, he specifically says, our hearts and our minds, the part of us that trusts and connects with God along with our spirits and our minds, the gate to our thinking and our decision making. That's a powerful thing. And look at the source. He guards us in Christ Jesus. Now, I'd say that's the best security system ever. Wouldn't you say? Hmm? 
Maybe that's what we ought to install in our houses. Hmm? Some of us have. Hallelujah. Now, say it to someone next to you. Receive his peace. All right. Okay, last finger, verse eight, rehearse. Say that word, rehearse. We've read that verse. There's some wonderful words in there and it covers quite a, quite a bit of territory, which is wonderful. But do you see now why verses four to seven are so important and that bring about his guarding us? Why would he guard us? not just to protect us from the enemy, but so that we are free to focus where we need to focus without distraction so we can grow in him and follow where he's leading us. Do you see? We don't get distracted by the enemy as much in the world and the tugs of our own flesh. Then we focus on the things that are really important the things that are eternally important, the things that are noble, right, pure, lovely, et cetera, et cetera, all those things, the powerful things that work eternal things in us. And, and that begins a new process. I want to encourage you with this, to see this process, and that will motivate you to commit to what's before. What you think determines what you believe, amen? Amen. And what you believe determines how you behave. Amen? So you see the process? As we focus on the things that are lovely, just, honest, good report, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there will be a new transformation taking place in us. Romans 12, 2, don't be conformed to the world, but keep on being transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is how it's happening. You see? We take every thought captive. 2 Corinthians 12, we don't give the enemy a foothold as easily, Ephesians 4, because we see his lies more clearly because we really know the truth. We can see the counterfeit because we're familiar with what's true and genuine more and more. Amen. And then I want to encourage you, what happens? What happens through this? What do we become more and more like? Or I should say, whom do we become more and more like? Just like Jesus. So what should be our primary goal as the body of Christ? The first and foremost, that we help each other to become more and more like Jesus. Wouldn't it be something if... Uh, say this week, one of you went to Rebecca, say, and you said, Rebecca, I saw what you did for so-and-so this week. That really blessed me. You looked a lot like Jesus when you did that. And that really touched my heart. I just want to encourage you. Good job. Keep it up. Wouldn't that be something if we would encourage each other like this and have as our goal I want to help him, I want to help her become more like Jesus. Wouldn't that be awesome? Amazing to me. And that's his goal for us, Romans 8, 29, right? That we be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. So say this to a person next to you, if there is someone there. In 2021, you're going to look more and more like Jesus. How's that for a goal? Amen? Hmm? And here's the staggering result as we commit to working through this whole process. Look what Paul says in verse 9. This is staggering to me. This this just hits me again every time I see this. If we really commit to these things, verses four through eight, like Paul says here, 
what will happen? The God of peace will be with us. That's something to sit with for a long time over the next days. Think of that. But you, you notice it isn't just his peace guarding our hearts and minds, but who is it? It's God himself. God, it says, will be with us. Say that, God himself. You see that? His very strength from his presence will flow through your fingers, your palm into your hand, hands, so you can get a good grip where you need to. He is faithful. He will be there. He does not ignore us. He cares about us deeply. Imagine, friends, in this year, what would happen at Agape Fellowship? Even beyond the wonderful things that are already happening at Agape, think of this, about the God of peace being even more with you and with me and all of us as we encourage each other in this year ahead to give us his amazing strength and make us fruitful for him. Wouldn't that be awesome? Thank you, Lord, for what it will be. Say that with me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, you know what I'm going to say next to you. What's the word, Rebecca? <laughs> Homework, right? Homework. You're in school, remember? I, I was going to have a piece of rope to have here. I looked all over and I could not find one that was thick enough that I could hold up in front of you today. But I want to encourage you. I'm going out uh, tomorrow and I'm going to find a, a hardware store that has some rope where I can get a piece, a foot long or even something like that, to have as a reminder for me, I'm going to keep it near my Bible. Some of you might want to hang it on your wall. I don't know, that may be strange, right? Or frame it or just have it somewhere as a reminder, get a grip, you know, hang on to God has everything you need, just grab onto it. And some amazing things will happen. So I just want to encourage you to consider that anyway, as a, a reminder, don't beat each other up with it. Don't do that. Just use it for yourself <laughs> and challenge yourself in this. Um, now, I think I'm, I'm with you in six weeks. Isn't that right, Rebecca? March 14, I believe. I want to encourage you again, um, at least three times a week, for three to five minutes, just sit with Jesus. Just be still. How's that been going? It's a challenge sometimes, isn't it? You can get distracted, but that's okay. Just hang in there with it. Um, just um, keep getting in the practice more and more. And just be still in his presence and listen. And you don't have to necessarily hear something Oh, I'm a failure because I sat with Jesus and he, he didn't say anything. That's okay. He might have, you just might not have heard it, or he might be starting to prepare your heart even more to receive what he wants. So don't, don't give up. He loves it when we persevere and hang in there because it shows how much we care about knowing him and how much we really want to have him in our life. So don't give up on that. Maybe you may want to sit with Philippians 4, 4 through 9, and just sit there with that sometimes, or another scripture that he's been putting on your heart. And I encourage you, this is the temptation for me. I sit down with a bunch of verses, and I start to analyze it automatically, pick it apart, say, all right, how is this hanging from this, or what does this relate to this? What's the meaning of this? And sometimes we need to just stop that and sit there with it and just let it wash over you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's an amazing different dynamic. We need the study per se, literal study, study. That's important, but we need times too to just sit 
with Jesus, but sit with his truth and let it do its thing to us, not us do something to it. We need both. Amen. Does that make sense? So I encourage you experiment and see what happens in this week. All right. Good. Any questions? Good. No. All right. Now, awesome. Let me just pray with you as we close. Okay. Uh, let's put our hands out and just pretend we're gripping a rope. All right. This is our rope we're hanging on today together. Let's stand in faith right now. Lord, we say that we are stepping out in faith to hold on to you like never before. With all our fingers, our whole hands, as tightly as we can, so that we're safe and secure as the storms come. And so we can become more and more just like you and be salt and light for you in this world. So we choose today to rejoice and to relax and to request and to receive and to rehearse. So now, Lord, thank you. Have your way. Use us for your glory. And God's people said, amen. God bless you, friends.